Hello everyone, welcome to Short Hand Battle. I am Divya and I am going to dictate you a legal matter of 500 words at the speed of 120 words per minute. So be ready for it. 3, 2, 1 and go. The trial court after analyzing the evidence found that there were few contradictions in the statement of PW1 and her daughter PW2 with regard to the period of stomach ache and the duration for which she was on medication by the local doctor or private chemist stop. However, in the opinion of the sessions court, these were very minor discrepancies stop. The sessions court noted that the prosecutrix was only 9 years old child when the incident happened and she was only 12 years of age when she deposed in the court and therefore it could not be expected of her to report each and every fact by giving minute details stop. The trial court further observed that both the witnesses withstood the test of credibility as even after undergoing detailed cross-examination, their depositions on vital aspects remained firm and could not be shaken para. The main argument advanced by the defense before the trial court was that it was a case of inordinate delay where reporting to the police was three years after the incident stopped. The trial court, however, was not convinced by this argument stop. In the judgment given by the trial court, detailed reasons are given which will be discussed at the appropriate stage by us as to how, in the given circumstances, the prosecution was able to explain the delay stop. Taking aid of various pronouncements of this court on this aspect, the trial court concluded that the said delay had not dented the case of the prosecution stop. Other argument of the defense that PW1, mother of the prosecutrix, had filed false complaint to implicate the respondent on account of family feud was also not found to be convincing para. In the ultimate analysis, the trial court believed the statement of the prosecutrix as true since it was supported by medical evidence on record stop. It was found to be trustworthy and not shrouded with any doubt stop. The trial court pointed out that the statement of PW8 clearly suggested that the prosecutrix was forcefully raped by the respondent and as a result of that, her hymen was ruptured and her external anal sphincter was also torn stop. Even internal sphincter was not continence stop. She found that anal sphincter of the prosecutrix was not functioning properly stop. In the opinion of PW8, on account of injury to the prosecutrix's anal sphincter, she might be a sufferer throughout her life para. Another argument of the defense before the trial court was that it was impossible that such an incident would have occurred in the house where so many family members lived stop. In such circumstances, it could not be believed that the respondent would have taken the prosecutrix to the room on the first floor and committed sexual intercourse stop. This argument was also brushed aside by the trial court pointing out that in her cross-examination, the prosecutrix has stated that the incident had taken place in the morning hours around 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. stop. Female members of the family returned back to the house after one hour of the incident stopped.